Hello everyone, and today I'm doing another recent reads video. So today is going to be YA contemporary theme. So, so with these videos, I'm gonna tell you what the book is about, what I rated it, and what I liked and didn't like about it. It's all going to be spoiler free. So the books I will be talking about today are You Say It First by Katie Catugno, Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel and Solomon, 10 Things I Hate About Pinky by Sinan Menon, and The Mall by Megan Mercafity. As always, there will be timestamps down below in case you want to hear about one particular book. Let's get into it because I have a lot of feelings about a lot of these books. So the first book is You Say It First by Katie Cadugno. I read this on Overdrive from my library, which I highly recommend you do. Overdrive is an amazing app, but this is her latest one. I have read every single one of Katie Cadugno's books before, and I have such a love not love with her books. I really enjoy her earlier ones such as um, How to Love which is right here in 99 Days and I'm not a big fan of her latest ones such as Fireworks and Top 10 I, and this one honestly. If I'm honest with you I give it a 2 out of 5. I really wanted to love it but sadly but sadly, I didn't. So this book, we follow two characters. We follow Meg and Colby, who are very, very different. Meg is a girl going to high school, and she's really active in her political field. She's really big feminist. She really understands what the world's going through and really tries to make it a better place. She works at this call center that's voting, and basically they just call people and ask, hey, are you registered to vote? And if they say no, they just help them through the process of registering to vote. They're not affiliated with one party or anything like that or dedicated to one single um, person running. They just want to help people be registered to vote, which I think is great. And so one night she calls um, Colby's house trying to reach his father, but Colby answers and they start talking, they get in an argument and he hangs up on her. She calls him back and leaves him a message to apologize. And then it kind of starts the relationship from there. They start calling each other, they start texting because I believe she lives in, um, oh goodness, I think she lives in Pennsylvania and he lives in Ohio, somewhere around there. They live like eight hours from each other and they begin a relationship, a long distance one. Overall, the just this book sounds really good. Two very, very different people having a long distance relationship. But the characters were just so incompatible. I think a lot of times with relation I think a lot of times with relationships, two people that are very different can definitely have a great relationship. Not you should not date the, the same person as you. I don't know anything about that really, but they were just incompatible. You know, Meg was very like feminist, she was really into political fields, and she really was an activist and things like that. And Colby just, I don't want to say he didn't care, he was just very aloof. He is also going through a lot, I will say that. This does have a lot of trigger warnings with parent death as well as suicide, just so you're aware. But Colby is going through a lot, and he just has a very different outlook on life than Meg. And so when they decided to be together, it was really hard because she would be introduced to his friends, and she would loathe his friends, get an argument arguments and he would be introduced to her friends and he wouldn't enjoy her friends. So it was just a really hard relationship. So that's kind of the bulk of the book and I just didn't love it. I found myself just really trudging through it and I just, that's all I have to say about it. This does have mixed reviews on Goodreads. You may like it, you may not, but it just seems to me that Katie Tugno is an author I do enjoy and she writes very realistic characters. I didn't like either of them but they were very realistic honestly. And I just don't love her latest books. I don't know why. I prefer I I don't know why, but I prefer her earlier ones. Maybe that's just me. I'm not sure. Maybe you'll love this book. I don't know, but it was just okay. It's definitely not one of my favorite contemporaries. So sad to say, I gave it a two out of five. I am sad about that. I don't ever go into book thinking, yeah, I can't wait to give this a two out of five. I don't ever want that. I'm sure you don't either, but that's how it is. <laughs> now. So moving on to the next book is Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I adored this book. So this is her third book. I've read all three. Her first two books, You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone and I forget the second one. What was the name of it? I forget. But they're both very hard-hitting kind of intense books. They have bittersweet endings. They just they're heavier, if you will. So when I heard she was going to release this one that is very much more lighthearted, meant very much more romance heavy, I was very excited for it. And I have to say, 
I loved it. I gave it a five out of five. I was obsessed with the characters. I wanted more of it. In this book, we follow a character named Rowan. She is a senior in high school and she has this arch nemesis named Neil. They have always been competing ever since the beginning of high school. Who can get the best grades? Who can have the perfect attendance? They just are arch rivals. And basically this takes place on like the last day of school where they are finally going to learn who is going to be deemed a valedictorian and it's not spoiling anything because it's on the back that Neil wins and so she's very upset about this so she decides to like have one last like contest of like arch nemesis, arch vibe, whatever you want to call it, um, through this game House. So their senior class has this game called Howl every single year and it's like a mixture of like tag and scavenger hunt all throughout Seattle because this book takes place in Seattle so her and Neil decide you know whoever wins this is gonna be the best or whatever and this book takes place within 24 hours from the beginning to Rowan wakes up to the end of her last day of her senior year and this game Howl and it was just such such a fun book. Going through Seattle, they had you find different places. Her and Neil actually end up teaming up together, which surprises her. And of course, feelings emerge. It's definitely a hate to love romance. And I really loved it. This gave me such strong 10 things I hate about you vibes because that's my favorite movie. We all know this, but that also takes place in Seattle. And so I could see a lot. They even referenced the movie in the book. And I was like, yes, but this is just such a fun book. If you were looking for a great like enemies to lovers, take place in like 24 hours and it's a fun book this is perfect for that it made me smile throughout the entirety of it and it's always Rachel and Solomon weaves Jewish faith into her books I believe she is of the Jewish faith I don't know if I'm correct in that but all of her books have um characters that are Jewish and I really enjoy reading about that because I don't know nearly enough as I want to so whenever she writes about it I love it because I get to learn more and I really like doing that so Rowan also <laughs> is a character that loves romance books and she wants to write her own romance novels and everyone kind of laughs and scoffs at her about re reading romance books and she never confides into anybody that she's writing one and I really love that because I think a lot of times in the book world romance does get looked down upon but I think it's becoming more like open now with romance and I think that's great because I love romance and I'm definitely still a new person into that world but I love that she loved romance novels like it was just great. Neil was also a great character as well we get to learn more about him and I could gush about this book on and on. I love Rachel and Solomon and I think this book's really gonna blow up which I'm really excited about because her first two books I think people know about and have read but they it didn't get enough buzz in my opinion and I've loved her ever since she released her first book because gosh that made me cry but I am excited for this one. I think it's going to be a big release and I'm excited for her because I adored it. Five out of five. Highly recommend if you're looking for a fun time. Next up we have 10 Things I Hate About Pinky by Sidon Menon. This is the third book in her When Dimple Met Rishi series. So this is a Y series that you can read out of order. You can only read one out of. They're not necessarily pertinent to read but I do recommend it because they have intertwining characters all throughout them. So in this book we follow Pinky and Samir. So Pinky and Samir were in the previous novel There's Something About Sweetie and in this book they decide to fake date. Pinky is very much going against her parents' conservatist um, ways. She likes to dye her hair. She likes to be an activist. She likes, you know, doing different things. She just really loves to rebel against her parents. And then we have Samir, who is completely different from that. He is very close to his mom, and he does everything, you know, according to the rules, and he wants to be a lawyer, which Pinky's mom is. And it's just, they're very, very different. And basically, they decide to fake date um, to appease Pinky's parents, and Samir gets an internship out of it and as always with romance and white contemporary books you can guess what happens next and overall I enjoyed this one I gave it a three out of five I love all of Menon's books they're just fun light-hearted romances that I enjoy I will say my favorite book in this series is definitely there's something about sweetie I love that one so much but this one was cute I like the fake dating aspect this is the book where two characters were very very different but came together at the end and really kind of 
they've helped one another, which I don't think you say it first did that Greta, but this one I think did. That's just my opinion, but I enjoyed this one. It was cute. I just didn't love it as much as I loved There's Something About Sweetie. I think I just love Sweetie as a character so very much and really saw myself in her. I don't know. I loved Sweetie, but this one was cute. I enjoyed I will always read all of her books because they're just fun, cute books that I adore. And also, I'm just now realizing that all the titles are kind of movie ones. This one obviously is 10 Things I Hate About Pinky, 10 Things I Hate About You, There's Something About Sweetie, There's Something About Mary, and When Diplomat Rishi, When Harry Met Sally. Why have I not caught on to that sooner? I don't know. <laughs> and the last book is The Mall by Megan McCafferty. I got this one as an e-arc, which is why I don't own it physically. This one I read specifically for the 90s readathon that's going on that I have a vlog for in case you want to check it out. I highly recommend you do. But this one, I really was expecting to like it, but overall I was just it was okay. So this book takes place in 1991, which I love the 90s. I I think a lot of us do. Nostalgia. I was born in 88, so I was a true kid in the 90s. So, so this book, we follow a character named Cassie, who is in the last summer before she leaves to college. She gets a job at the mall that's new, and the malls were very much a big thing in the 90s. The mall was the place to be. Everyone who was everyone was there. Everyone who was anyone had a job there. And so basically, she's really excited because she's going to be working at America's Best Cookie with her boyfriend and she's just really excited because they're gonna go to college like within 30 minutes of each other and basically the very beginning of the book she learns that he breaks up with her because he's been cheating on her and she can't work at the same place as him obviously and she's just very distraught so she ends up getting a job at this clothing store named Bella Rosa um, in the mall as well that she that her uh, mom that her ex-best friend's mom owns and runs and so she has to work with like her ex-best friend and basically this is just a book about the mall <laughs> and what goes in the mall also there's like this treasure hunt that her ex-best friend and her try to find throughout um, different stores in the mall and it was okay I would say if you're not like a die-hard fan of the 90s maybe skip out on this one because it name drops everything bands um stores, food, things like that, which I mean, I liked, but then again, in the early 90s, I was like, young. So like, I didn't have Orange Julius. I didn't go to America's Best Cookie, all that kind of stuff. So I would say like, if you love, love the 90s and just want to read everything you can about it, definitely check out this book. But in case you're like, it sounds cool. I like the 90s. I don't know if I would recommend it for you. There wasn't a ton of depth to this book. Cassie was a character that was very dead set on leaving this town, didn't really care about anybody. And she definitely changes by the end of the book. And I do enjoy that. But there just wasn't a lot of dimension to this book. It was just really honestly a book about the ball in the 90s, which was fun, but I don't think was like super amazing. So Honestly, I would give it a two and I know that's harsh, but I'm trying to be more realistic with my reading this one Like I liked it. It wasn't super amazing and I don't think I would recommend it to everyone So if you're a 90s fan and just want 90s crazy check it out If not, maybe skip out on it, but the cover is aces. I'll say that but yeah, sad to say my 90s heart is kind of broken a little bit <laughs> but that's okay not every book I read is gonna be amazing well, there you have it those are my thoughts and feelings on the four books that I talked about I would hold them all up but I don't even have two of them but I would love to hear if you've read them and what you think of them and if you're going to read one or not read one I would love to hear your thoughts thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye mm -hmm.